the joy of being taught by God. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in prayer. We come and ask you, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and be with us as we take a look at the words you would have for us. And we thank you that we are open to being taught by you. Father, just come now and speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. So one day I was praying, Lord, Lord, lead me to some words from you that you would have for me today that I might speak to others about. In quietness and in prayer, I waited for his leading. Presently, I was led to Psalm 25, verse 4, 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day long. The question arises, why do we want to learn? We can learn even if we are older. To learn means that there's a desire to know more so that we can be better at who we are and better at what we endeavor to do. More skilled, more efficient, more mature. There are so many things to learn, so many things to learn. At my age, <laughs> it's hard to keep up. Computers, new every six months, just like my new one. The internet, phones that don't hang on the wall anymore, sit on the desk. More passwords than Carter has little liver pills as the old saying goes. All this has to do with this world and these things of the world. What about the things of lasting importance? The things of God? What are some important things we must know about God? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In Romans 5, God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because God loves us, he teaches us his laws. Does he teach us his laws to discipline us? To give us rules? No. He teaches us his laws and his ways so that we can learn and be acceptable to him in his presence. He wants us to understand him better and to love him more. In Deuteronomy 5, but as for you stand here by me, that I might speak to you all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which you shall teach them. That was God talking to Moses. God himself tells us why he wants to teach us even these days in 2021. Listen to what he tells us and the reward he promises us. Deuteronomy 6. Now this is the commandment, the statutes, the judgments, which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going to possess it so that you and your son 
and your grandson might fear the Lord your God to keep all his commandments and statutes and his commandments which I command you all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. We are destined for a new land, the promised land, and God wants us to be prepared to live in the place that he is preparing for us. We are to teach our loved ones, including our children and grandchildren, so that they will also be prepared. In addition to our loved ones, we must learn and be taught by God so that we can fulfill the great responsibility, the great commission he has given to us to take to heart the awesome promise that he gives us in Matthew 20, 28. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, listen, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Who of us would not like more wisdom? Who of us have not said, oh, if only I had known that, if only I had, Job 33, listen to me, keep silent, and I will teach you wisdom, says the Lord. We cry out from, heart, from hearts of longing. And Job 34 is, is speaks for us, teach thou me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. Psalm 25, make me know thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. For thee I wait all day long. What are some of the ways we learn? We learn from those in authority. Take free Ephesians 4. So Christ himself gave apostles, prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the pastors, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We also learn from each other. In first, or Second Timothy 1, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. In Revelation 1, who testifies to everything he saw, that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's so important to learn from each other. We learn by the testimony of each other's lives. The Lord God teaches us through each other's lives. Romans 14, for none of us lives to ourselves alone, and none of us dies to ourselves alone. In Psalm 15, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. These are examples of lives. Psalm 84, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. 
no good thing will he withhold, will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. It's through others' lives and their walk with the Lord that we learn of the Lord and he teaches us how true, how true that is. We learn from our daily personal Bible study, meditating thereon, time in prayer, listening for what God has to say to us. Not only do we read and meditate, but we listen. Psalm 33, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalm 37, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Wonderful instructions. Luke 12, and you yourselves be like men who wait for their master. How busy we are these days. How busy. We have to wait, spend time in prayer and wait for the master to speak to us as we wait for our master. <clears throat> this is important. Why should we take the time and make the effort to be taught? Why? Why? Why should we learn? What is the purpose of our learning anyway? Psalm 111, the works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Studied by all who have pleasure in them. Proverbs 15, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. And we do not want to pour forth evil. So we study how to answer. As St. Paul admonished Timothy, his protege, we must also be a worker for God who does not need to be ashamed because of lack of knowledge and understanding. In 2 Timothy 2, Paul writes, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In Romans 10. But what does it say? The world is near you. The word, sorry, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. St. Paul instructs us today, even in 2021. In 2 Timothy, he writes to us, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Now my daughter Lori in Kingston, Ontario has two kids at home who are now taking school by uh, over the internet. So she has one room set for one and one room set for the other. And uh, they are uh, in there and he's, she's keeping an eye. But at the same time, being as she's also teaching, she's teaching two other youth and she's set herself up in another room. Now, talk about long suffering in teaching. She has to set aside, and she, she just has to have patience. And the Lord is giving her patience, and we're thankful for that. 
What happens when we really learn something that is so very important to us? Well, we want to share. Sharing is most effective and meaningful when it's done in love. Ephesians 4, from him, the whole body is joined and held together. That's like learning from one another, you know, by every supporting ligament. It grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And Philemon 1, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Psalm 25, God, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners the way. Psalm 34, come, children, listen closely. I'll give you a lesson in God worship. Amen and amen. Not only are we to share our love of God when we really understand how great and wonderful it is, but we are to share with the church and others what God has so generously provided for us. Matthew 28, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. That is that I have taught you and that you have learned all things I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The last part means that we are also to remember that we are only human also, and that we may have a family not to be forgotten about. We must teach and love and observe things with them. Do not forget that we are only human and we have a family. Oh, what joy when we are taught by our Heavenly Father. What joy when he teaches us that our heart and our knowledge comes alive within us. We learn from him and then to serve him with this knowledge and excitement and love. Deuteronomy 30, for the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your forefathers. In Romans 15, and again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people, with one another, rejoice. Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice when he teaches us and we learn and we serve him and we teach others. Let us rejoice together. Now, to him who is able to teach you all things. May he fill your life with great abundance and joy and make you shine like the stars in his heavens, each of you. May his countenance shine upon you and give you his joy and peace. Amen and amen. Should you want to get in touch with me, you can through Home Church Langley on YouTube or by email at dave-arlene 
A-R-L-E-N-E, at talus.net. Thank you.